Hello there, beautiful people. Welcome to the latest webisode of The Weekly Weigh-In. This week, we're going to be talking about Belle Gibson and how she faked a devastating disease for many years to build her online empire. And then, in our Hollywood spotlight, we will be focusing on my future baby mama, Ms. Caitlyn Jenner, and how she broke the internet with her latest cover on the July issue of Vanity Fair. This week is going to be a very sensitive subject, and the subject that I am talking about is cancer. No matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, it will always affect us either directly or indirectly. Either we will be diagnosed with it sometime in our lifetime, or we will have someone close to us who has been diagnosed with cancer. Now, when this happens, shit starts to get real especially with the constant doctor's visits, the chemotherapy, and the high doctor bills. So, ladies and gentlemen, cancer is not a game, nor is it a form of entertainment. And this week, I want to talk about how Bill Gibson faked having this terminal disease to make millions. In November of 2014, she claimed in her newest book that she had been cancer-free for about two years. It's a miracle, right? Well, as her story dragged on, there seemed to be quite a few inconsistencies. Like, for example, one week she would say the cancer spread to her brain and that she was now cancer-free. And then the next week she would turn around and say the cancer spread to her uterus, blood, lungs, kidneys, or whatever she felt like saying that the cancer spread to that week. And the more she was caught in her web of lies, the more people started becoming skeptical whether, as to whether or not she was telling the truth. This is where the story gets better, so I hope you guys got some popcorn for this one. Belle has claimed in the past that she has undergone heart surgery. Now, being the detective that I am, I decided to sleuth on her Instagram and I found this picture, and for me, there's no evidence of that at all. And then I decided to compare it to a picture of a lady who did have open heart surgery. So, unless they shrunk surgeons down in a little submarine to operate on Bell, like in Fantastic Voyage, I have a hard time buying her story because there's no scar there. So, I don't know. There's something very fishy going on. As I investigated Belle's story even further, I could not help but become very, very angry. And for a very good reason. You see, I grew up with a father who had his first heart attack at 45 years old. And then at 63, he was taken from us by cancer. Unfortunately, I could not be there in my father's last days, but I do remember my mother and my sister telling me that as the cancer ravaged my father's body, he was no longer the human being that we all once knew and loved. He was a shell of what he once was. And as someone who has had people close to her die from cancer, and I have seen the results firsthand, people, this is what cancer does. Cancer is not a game. Cancer is not something to be faked. In my opinion, Belle Gibson is the girl who cried wolf. So God forbid, if cancer ever strikes her, she's going to have a hard time to get anyone to believe her. What Ms. Gibson has done is totally 100% unforgivable. But did she get away with it? Well, apparently not. 
Simon and Schuster has pulled her latest cookbook from its shelves and has stopped production and release of the book in the UK and the United States. But here's where it gets better. Apple Inc. that approved her app for the Apple Watch, the iPod, and the iPhone, as well as their other devices, have pulled her app from their store. So it looks like she's not going to be making any more money from her lies anytime soon. But here's where it gets better. In between the years of 2013 and 2014, Ms. Gibson raised about $300,000 for three charities through her website, The Whole Pantry. Only $7,000 was donated. So it kind of makes you wonder, where exactly did all that money go? Or maybe she's got a deep purse. But it wasn't just charities, ladies and gentlemen. She skimmed individuals for profit. In March of 2015, the parents of a young child suffering from brain cancer were befriended by Gibson. They recently came forward after they became aware that she was raising funds for their child. But they never got the money. Sounds a little suspicious, don't you think? In my personal opinion. This doesn't make her just any old scam artist. This makes her a monster. She used a disease to make millions. She exploited charities and she exploited individuals. Now, she's currently asking for forgiveness and she wants her fans to see her as human. Well, I don't know if I can see her as human because she used innocent people to build her online empire, and I don't think this is right. This makes her a monster, and I strongly believe that there is a special place in hell for people like Bill Gibson. So, question of the day. Is faking cancer okay if you want to make a profit, or should it be punishable by law? Sound off with your comments in the comments section below. In our Hollywood Spotlight, we will be talking about Caitlyn Jenner and how she finally feels free to be herself after all of these years. This week has been quite the celebration, not only for the GLBT community, but for the trans community as well. And here's why. On Monday, Vanity Fair unveiled their newest cover for their July 2015 issue featuring Caitlyn formerly Bruce Jenner, on their cover. And let me say, she looks absolutely amazing. Miss Jenner also introduced herself to the world via Twitter on Monday by gaining over 1 million followers in 4 hours and 3 minutes, beating President Obama's record last month when he introduced his POTUS account. Here was what Caitlin's very first tweet had to say. I'm so happy after such a long struggle to be living my true self. Welcome to the world, Caitlin. Can't wait for you to get to know her slash me. The burning question that has been on the minds of the masses since Ms. Jenner's debut on Monday is, why didn't she spell her first name with a K? Well, this is what TMZ has learned. Caitlyn Jenner did not spell her first name with a K because she wants a clean break from the Kardashian moniker. Sources closely associated with Bruce tell us Caitlyn wants to make it clear to her family and the world that she is her own person. That sounds obvious, but we're told it was an extremely meaningful choice for her, and she has not been her own person before, and becoming part of the Kardashian brood would undermine her goal. Our sources say it's not that there's bad blood between Caitlyn and the Kardashians. It's all about self-identity. Well, I don't know about y'all, but something is telling me Chris ain't too happy about that. Also on that very same day, ESPN has announced that Caitlyn Jenner will also be awarded the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. Now, I don't know about you, but... This is a step in the right direction, and it gives me hope for society as a whole. So this is amazing on all levels. If you want to read more about the Bell Gibson controversy and Caitlyn Jenner, 
you can check out the links in my blog on Tumblr this week. Well, that's it for another webisode of the Weekly Weigh-In. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at middleagefatass at gmail.com. Also, if you want to check out my updates and my schedules and my newest tweets, you can check out my brand spanking new website at middleagefatassdx.weebly.com. I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you guys tomorrow for Food Porn Friday.